Just five question pre-assessment for you to get started on. For you guys on the edge of your seats, obviously I haven't graded these yet, but every answer was A. We'll talk, we'll pick up from there later. But like I said, this is pre-assessment. I'm going to use this to kind of uh, drive instruction later on, okay? Um, I need for everyone to go ahead and open up their book to page 81. Um, we still have section 1.8 and 1.9, obviously, to finish. But we're going to go on today and unpack the embedded assessment for today. Okay? Um, when we do this, all right? Uh, we're going to go about it kind of similar to what we're used to doing. So if I could have a volunteer read the first paragraph, and while this person is reading, can I have someone come to the smart board and mark the text? <coughs> Remember, when we mark the text, we're going to highlight important information that we may need to be successful. Read, Petrie, you mind marking the text? No. Okay. All right. Um, and feel free to mark the text if you want to do it slightly different in your own book. Make sure um, you're doing that as well. Um, is everybody ready? Let me make sure everybody's ready on page 81. Yep. The first hill of the Steel Dragon 2000 roller coaster in Nagashima, Japan, drops riders from a height of 318 feet. A portion of the first hill has been transposed onto a coordinate plane and is shown to the right. <coughs> Write your answers on notebook paper or grid paper and show your work. One, the structure of the supports for the hill consists of steel beams that run parallel and perpendicular to one another. The endpoints of the longer of the two support beams highlighted in quadrant one are 0, 150, and 120, 0. If the endpoints of the other highlighted support beam are 0, 125, and 100, 0, verify and explain why these two beams are parallel. Two, determine the equations of the lines containing the beams from item one, and explain how the equations of the lines can help you determine that the beams are parallel. Um, Petrie, do you need a minute to get caught up? Yes. Okay. This is the entire thing. It's fine. Yeah. Um, someone like to pick up reading on number three. Travis? The equation of the line containing another support beam is y equals 4 over 5x plus 150. Determine whether this beam is a number of shots. You have two beams. Explain your reasoning. Four, a linear portion of the first drop is also highlighted in the photo and has endpoints of 62, 258, and 110, 132. The nearest foot, determine the distance between the endpoints of the linear section of the track. Justify your result by showing your work. Um, someone else like to come up and mark the text? You did a fine job, Mr. Petrie. I get a volunteer to read. Thank you. A camera is being installed at the midpoint of the linear portion of the track described in item four. Determine the coordinates where this camera should be placed. Six. Explain how you could use the distance formula to verify that the coordinates you determined for the midpoint are correct. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, so everybody's marked the text as we went along here. You have post-it notes, okay, in front of you, and I will be available if you need more. Here's what I want you guys to be thinking with your post-it notes. On your pink post-it notes, you're going to write down things that you already know to help you be successful on this embedded assessment. Okay. 
On the yellow post-it notes, write down things that you need to learn to be successful on this embedded assessment. Okay, so take a few minutes right now, individually, and raise your hand if you need more. I want you guys to write in pink items that you know that will help you be successful on this embedded assessment, and on the yellow post note, items that you need to learn to be successful. Are we doing like one per note? Um, you can, yeah. And I'll be around with more notes. I just gave you some to get started with. Yeah, let's keep, just do one on each, things you know on pink and what you need to learn on the yellow. All right, about four minutes of individual think time right now. So is it like what we know about? Anybody not have anything in a yellow card? Did not get to the yellow post-it notes yet? All right, very good. All right, here's what you're going to do now. In your groups, you guys are going to come to a consensus about what you need to learn in order to be successful on this embedded assessment. Everybody in the group needs to make sure you have time to present your ideas. Obviously, don't spend time Re uh, um, presenting ideas that have already been brought up by other group <coughs> members. But if you have something to add to it, sure, by all means, do that. Okay? So you're going to be coming up with what you guys think as a group of four will go in our KWL chart. And then we're going to be prepared. Ms. Spritsky can pick someone from your group to present a card to share out with the whole class. Okay? Any questions on what you're going to be doing in your groups? So you're coming into a consensus, what everybody agrees on, they already know, and what they need to learn. Any questions? All right, have at it. Thank you. I said I just need a brush up of the stuff since I haven't done algebra, but I, I get, when I look at the linear equations, I basically know what everything is. Like I know how to find what the, the slope is and what y intersects. So. Okay. Did you guys hear what Brady had to say? Do you guys have anything that you can add to help him? Some other things he might want to know? to be successful on this? You said you just need to brush up on algebra. I need to take the distance. Like what algebra? Between the points. Just, just how to find the distance between two points. Do you know the relationship about parallel lines and perpendicular lines in their equations? So that might be something. Does anybody else know the relationship between parallel lines and perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines, the uh, equations. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that either. I don't know how to find the equation of a line. Or I, I mean, I know how to find the equation. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That'd be pretty bad. If I, um, I know a parallel and perpendicular. Yeah, that's what I said. I the types of lines. So you know the types of lines, but do you know the relationships with parallel and perpendicular lines in regards to their equations? Yeah. Yeah. Recipro opposite reciprocals are perpendicular, and then uh, same, same slope same. is parallel. Perfect. Okay. Because I know That's we just right. finished talking about why lines are parallel. <laughs> you don't know if you're awesome. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> How to plot forms? Is distance formula like? Is it something to do like with this, or is it like actually like formula um, like a line? Like something that says like on this. Well, what do they want you to do with the distance formula? Did you? Well. Explain how you could use the distance formula to verify the coordinates you determine from the midpoint. Yeah, so it sounds like we need some help with the distance formula. Yeah, that's what really Okay. Cool. And then, like, linear section, I like, know what, like, I probably know what it is, but I don't know how to find it. Linear what? Linear section. Where do you see that? Uh, the right, that, right here. What question, or what part of the question are you referring to? Is this four? Right yeah. The distance between the endpoints of the linear sec. You can also refer to that as linear segment. Yeah. So that segment. So what are those endpoints? Is what they're asking. Or what is the distance between the endpoints? Okay. Okay. I know how to find the slope. We know the linear equations. What form of linear equations are you guys most comfortable with? Standard. You like standard form? Really? Interesting. I think it's more of like linear straight form. I can kind of see the line better. Now, are you referring to this as standard? Mm -mm. No, I'm not referring. I, I mean standard where it's like. I like slope intercept. I like the slope intercept. Okay, and that's what that is there. Okay, so we might want to make sure we're sure on our different forms of equations as well. I guess we need slope intercept form. I like standard form better. Okay. So would you take this just out of curiosity? It is in slope intercept, and would you put it into standard form? Sometimes, yeah. No, I'm. I'm. A, when it, it depends on the situation. Like, yeah. if I'm making something into this, like starting with standard form, but if I'm using, if I'm, you know, trying to find the slope, then I use slope. Intercept. Right. So different situations yeah. require different forms. I totally agree. Three words. <laughs> I did what I did. I'm ashamed. What's wrong? Hers are like sentences. Mine are like three words. Well, and that's fine. And I told somebody, as long as you're able to articulate to your group what these mean, I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Where are we? Are we in a good... We, we picked the ones that we all know and the ones we all know. Okay. Do we have any out there that, like, she knows that other people don't know or... No, I think we all. We have like the same one. Okay. They're just not as important, maybe. They're just right. background, yeah. in background information that we already know. Okay. Very good. Consensus as a group. Yeah. Well, both. What you already know. How many are we gonna present? Uh, until we get finished, I think. I mean, we might take turns going around, and that's why it's gonna be imperative that you guys listen to other groups because I don't want you to repeat what other groups already say. None of us know what the distance for Okay. Very good. Is that the D equals RT? Is that the distance formula? That That's the, interesting. That Technically, it is. Yeah. 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 It is, but um, in contents of, in connection with coordinate geometry, yeah. a That's good example is range. We think of range, you, most of you guys know range in regards when you came in here knowing the difference between two points, two data points, but then we learned range is our input or our output on our um, X and Y table. So different things have different meanings. So we got to clarify which one we need to use. Very good. We're still just talking about what we know and don't know, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are. Brandon. 
Is that appropriate? Are, so we're finished. Are we finished? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, if I can get your attention up here, I know some of you have your backs to me, so if you can get into a situation where um, it's visible up here. And we're going to start sharing out from groups different things that we know that will allow us to be successful on this embedded assessment and different things we need to learn in order to be successful on this embedded assessment that we want to learn. Okay? Um, imperative, okay, so that we can be efficient. Have your listening ears on, okay? So I don't want a, us to be resharing things already stated by other groups. So make sure you guys are all listening while people are sharing out. Feel free to piggyback on what they have to say as well, though. Brandon looks like he's eager to start us off. OK, um, you, know, um, you know how to verify and support uh, why they're particular and <laughs> okay, I've got. I'm um, just quick formative assessment. Thumbs up if you know how to do that already. Thumbs down if you don't. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing. Yes, ma'am. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you know how to do that. Thank you much. Another group? Michaela? Um, lines are parallel if they have the same slope. <coughs> Thumbs up or thumbs down if you knew that. What does that say? Parallel lines have same slope. Ooh. Okay. Yes, Nick. How to find the distance of a line. You know how to do that? Yeah. Thumbs up or thumbs down? No. What? Ooh. So, you guys, um, Nick, with the exception of you, it looks like I'm going to put that on something we want to learn. Okay? Okay, very good. Jackson. Would somebody in Jackson's group care to el elaborate on this gibberish he just said? This is slope intercept form. Anything else we know? That the if the m value is a uh, positive whole number, then it will have a steeper slope than a um, fraction. Ooh, so now he's talking about the various slopes and how slopes vary in steepness. Yes, sir. <laughs> so to have perpendicular lines, can someone re rephrase what he said? Well, I'm sure you can. You said it. But for everybody that was listening, can someone rephrase what he just said? Will? Like, like you have two and you can uh, thumbs up if you agree what Will just said. And Will, if I did not interpretate that correctly, bear with me. So thumbs up or thumbs down if you agree what Will said. Or 
So we're kind of in the middle here. So this, I'm going to just, we're going to put it both places there. We'll get to that point. Okay. So we're kind of split on that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what the, the midi point with what it is and how you get it? I don't know. Lauren, you're shaking your head. Okay. So what's your... <laughs> I just, Eliza, I just totally did it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Liza, what's your issue with midpoint? You, do you know what midpoint is? Okay, so Liza says she knows what midpoint is. But she wants to know how to find it. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I played Frendo the quadrants. Can you rephrase that? I know where the quadrants are. Oh, if we're talking about coordinate geometry, we, we have to be familiar with the coordinate plane. <coughs> Anything else we're missing um. that we already know? that's going to help us be successful. We know lots. We can stay up here all day. Okay? But what do we know that will help us be successful on this? Travis? You know what a quadrant is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. listening ears on. Okay. We had our listening ears off momentarily. That's I forgive you. That's all right. I don't know where what quadrant is. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Now I all right. Yes, ma'am. Which forms of linear equations like the standard form of linear equations? Oh! You just told me you loved it. <laughs> so. That was the other time. I like standard form when it comes to parabola. Boys and girls, let's make sure we're raising our hand to share out. So. She is concerned or she does know the other forms. This is slope-intercept form. Obviously, we have other forms of linear equations we may be working with. Okay. Um, anything that we want to learn, that we need to learn to be successful on this? A linear portion. Yeah, yeah, I think they're just talking about that linear section right there on, um, let me highlight it up here. A linear portion of the first drop is highlighted. I, they're talking about right there. Yeah, wording's not something we're used to seeing, but I think using some inferences. So the statement? Say, yeah, yeah. Anything else we want to learn? Okay. Uh, based on the information I've gathered from you guys, we know a lot. Okay. So I'm interested to also look at your pre-assessments to see if everything that we say we know, are we able to display that in our assessment, our pre-assessment as well. And um, that will give me some indication as to what we need to do as we move on to sections, the next two sections. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Anything that you feel like I've missed? that you're ready to share out. All right, thank you very much, and let's get back into our rows.